All right, I'm here with your winner, Brian Kelleher. Brian, you took 10 years to get here. You walked out to this crowd booing you very loud. And you told me a moment ago that you actually had no nerves at the start of this fight. Yeah, man, I actually felt really really uh, good, really at home in here. I had no nerves. I felt like I already belonged here, you know? Ooh, vamos, head up. Ooh, vamos, head up. Shh. Hey! Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Oh, shit. Dana, that's number 13 in the world. I just took number 13 out. I want a top 10 guy. I don't want the slow pace. Feed me to the sharks. I'm ready. Well, everybody, we are back here on the MMA Report, and it's a pleasure to be joined by this man who swooped into the UFC this past weekend, and to me was one of the standouts of last Saturday's pay-per-view in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He is Brian Boom Kelleher, who I'm sure is still uh, living off of the effects of this past Saturday night, which had to have been a high point in your career. Brian, thanks so much for joining us, just a few days removed from this incredible performance you had in Brazil. Yeah, and it's a surreal experience. Uh, thanks a lot for having me on the show. Uh, d- have you had a chance to kind of sit down and process everything? I mean, d- just take us through what this these last couple of days have been like and kind of returning home and the reception you've received. Yeah, you know, it was kind of crazy. Like, after the fight, I figured, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty emotional guy. Like, I figured I would, you know, shed some time in the victory. But it was just like I knew I belonged there, so... For some reason, I was just cool, calm, collected throughout the whole trip, and I think that kind of carried me through to victory. But as soon as I got home, I was just showered with so much love from all the people from my town, you know, hundreds of people congratulating me, and, and uh, it was just an amazing feeling to come back, see my mom, see my brother, and uh, you know, rejoice with everybody and celebrate the victory. Tell me what it was like the the first day you you went back to your gym and just being around your teammates and kind of uh, uh, that reaction as well. I mean, kind of a, a second family for you there at your gym. Yeah, I went back to my gym yesterday, you know, just to drop off some stuff. You know, I took a few days off of training just to reset my body, but uh, it was amazing. Everybody was just so excited for me, and um, you know, they knew I was going to pull it off. But uh, they were just, you know, congratulating me and. Uh, I just felt amazing, you know, all the love that I've been getting. I really appreciate it. I know that you, you've you spoken about the fact that, that you went into this fight, you didn't feel a whole lot of nerves, and you just mentioned kind of that you felt you belong there. Do you feel that your long road to get to the UFC, that that kind of paid dividends, that you didn't get there too early? You weren't overwhelmed by the experience or the stage you were performing on. You felt, this is where I should be. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, I think... Uh, as far as fighting goes, it takes a long time to find yourself as a fighter. You know, and uh, I just happen to be a late bloomer, you know, in, in, in that aspect. So, uh, you know, it took me time to really find myself, who I was, and get that right mental aspect that, you know, I knew I could beat anybody, you know. So, you know, I carried that into the fight. You know, I, I'm on a six-fight win streak. You know, I really truly believe I could beat anybody in the world. You know, and that's the mentality you have to have in this sport. So, you know, I went in there with number 13 in the world, and I said, you know what? This is perfect. I'm 30 years old. I'm fighting number 13. It couldn't get any better. Like, I'm a huge underdog. This is how you got to make a statement in this sport. When was when did that click for you where you felt that you had matured as a fighter, that you were at that level? Was it a certain point in time that you recognized that, or was it something where you have to look back in hindsight at a change? Yeah, you know, I remember, like... It, you know, right before I went on my win streak, you know, my record really wasn't up to par. I kind of knew, you know, I'm not even, you know, nobody even knows me. Like, my record's 10-7. and seven. I'm just one of those vets that, you know, that ends up just, you know, stop, you know, stopping fighting and getting a real job. And I don't know what to do. And, you know, I'm getting older. And I just, I hit a mental switch. And I said, you know what? It's now or never. Like, I'm either going to go on a tear right now. I'm going to give myself one or two more fights. I got a full-time job. And, you know, it was really motivating. Like I was working a job that I just wasn't happy with. You know, I, I never wanted to settle for, you know, just working a job just to get a steady paycheck. You know, that's not happiness to me. So I said, you know, it's either I'm going to live out my dream or I'm going to have to live, you know, unhappy just working a regular job. So 
that was really motivating. And I took that with me in these fights. And I, I took on like a lot of top prospects in the, in the uh, Bantamweight division. And it was like, you know, undefeated guys that had a lot of hype behind them. And I said, you know what? If I could take out these guys, then I could really uh, revamp my career and show that I belong in the top in the UFC. Now, along the way, uh, throughout your years, did you ever try and go the ultimate fighter route? Was that ever something that interested you? Yeah, you know, that was something that interested me. Uh, I didn't, I never really tried out for the show. You know, I think I missed a few shows that were uh, in my weight class. Right. But, um, you know, after I went on that winning streak, I kind of felt like, you know what, like, I'm a veteran of the sport. I'm kind of past the ultimate fighter as far as, like, you know, how many fights I have and how many wins I have. And, uh... I felt like that would be a step back, you know. Yeah, it's good exposure, but uh, a lot of those guys on the Ultimate Fighter, they're not really happy with their contract when they get in the UFC. You know, they don't really get a good deal. And, uh, you know, you end up getting a slow pace, you know, rise. You know, they don't really give you, like, a big-name opponent from the show. But uh, I did think if the opportunity came, that I would take it for sure because, you know, you want the world to see your character and and get, uh, get good exposure. So I would have done it, but I truly believe that I could win and keep uh, winning fights and, and get in that way. Now, in this fight, uh, where you, you got the call, I, I believe it was about three weeks out from the fight, and I speak to a lot of fighters, and there's definitely something to be said for having such a short window to prepare for a fighter where uh, for a fight where a lot of the the overthinking is eliminated because you have tunnel vision on something that is happening in the immediate future. Would, was having the, the short preparation time, were there advantages to that? Yeah, you know what? I think there's uh, some advantages to that, but I also feel like I, I, I'm never preparing for a fight like in a, in a short time. You know, I'm, I'm prepared all the time to mm-hmm. fight the best right now. You know, I don't ever, I don't ever veer off the path. I keep my diet clean. You know, I eat, I eat bad food for like the last few days after a victory and then I get right back on my diet and, you know, I never let things get out of hand. So I keep my weight good. And, uh, this whole time I, I was manifesting this, you know, I was, I was praying, I was manifesting, visualizing and, and imagining that this was definitely going to happen. So I believed in it. And so that kind of helped me stay prepared and stay ready because I knew it would be a short notice situation. And, uh, when it happened, you know, I was a hundred percent ready. I had been, training, you know, intense, you know, for months and months. There was no training camp. It was just staying ready, you know, all the time. How do you approach someone like a Yuri Alcantara who has uh, quite a storied career, has fought some of the best bantamweights in the world? Did you just divorce the the name and this was just your next fight? Or did you look at this as somebody that, man, I beat this guy, this catapults me into this division in short order? Yeah, you know, I kind of divorced the name, like you said, but I kept that number. You know, that number 13, that's right. what motivated me. I said, all right, you know, let's see. This guy's fought Uriah Faber, Jimmy Rivera, you know, Brad Pickett. Like, he fought the top guys in, in the division. And, and look, man, I, uh, Uriah Faber could have finished this guy. Jimmy Rivera could have finished this guy. These guys are, you know, top-level guys. And I finished him within under, under two minutes, and I finished him in his game. You know, uh, he's a high-level black belt. And uh, I don't look into any of that and let it get to me. Like you said, I don't. I, I didn't overthink the moment. I just believe in myself, and I and I find a way to finish. You know, no matter what, I go in there to finish the fight, and I believe it's going to get done. Do you sense that with a lot of other fighters that that you've worked with, where sometimes the name that they're fighting it, it turns into the, this this mythical character almost that you're not even fighting a human being. That the the whole overwhelming nature of that kind of just takes over, and it can be very de- debilitating for a fighter to perform to the best of their abilities. Yeah, 100%. You know, I think, I, you know, I think I've had times in my career where, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the sport. I'm watching these guys on TV, and I'm like, man, I, I, like, I know I can compete with this guy, but at the same time, they're built up to be like, you know, so, some, some big deal. And you have to understand that everyone's human and that you, you prepare hard, too, for the, the sport. You know, when you get in there and it's a fight, it's just you and that person and anything can happen. Every fight's different. Every style is different. You know, you have to understand that just because someone beat someone else doesn't mean, you know, they're going to fight the same exact way against you. So I just believe in my skills. I don't think about my opponent and I don't really put a name on him and, and build him up to be this machine. You know, I just say this is another guy. He's doing the same thing I'm doing, but I know I want it more. 
Now, of course, I, I want to talk about your, your post-fight speech because I think so often we see fighters that will come in and put, put together a tremendous performance and they feel that the, the show is over at that point and the interview after is just uh, to, of no consequence. You clearly saw the value of this brief time speaking with, with Brian Stan and addressing that audience. And to me, that left a huge impression on many people of who Brian Kelleher was. Did you go into that kind of with that mindset that, hey, I've got a minute or two here. I want to make people remember who I am. Exactly. You know, I think you have to be aware of, uh, you know, taking in the moment and making the best of it. And I knew, you know, after I beat this guy, you know, Sam's going to come in there and I can't just be this regular guy. Now, I know you you want to be yourself. You don't want to get too far-fetched, but that was me, you know, like I'm filled with a lot of passion. You know, I, I'm filled with emotions and I was excited about victory. And I really believe in myself. I really feel like I can fight the best right now, you know, so I knew I had to make that statement. And this is your chance. You know, the whole world sees you in that moment. This is everyone's listening. What's this guy about? You know, what does he want? And I and I really think, you know, if you ask, you shall receive. So I just put it all out there. I asked for everything that I wanted and look, here we are, you know, uh Long Island's coming up and uh, you know, I think the UFC is behind me and they see something they see a bright star for the future. Yes, and, and can you confirm that it's it's Marlon Vera on July twenty second? Yeah, uh, it's Marlon Vera on July twenty second. Were you disappointed at all about John Lineker? I mean, he kind of publicly stated he didn't think that the fight with you made sense. Are you happy with this situation, the fact that it is on Long Island? You know, when it comes to business, I understand Lineker's uh, stance on that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not upset about it. Uh, I'm just, I'm here to fight the best. Like I said, feed me to the sharks, you know. I really mean that. Like, I, I don't want, I don't want the, the slow pace where they build me up and it takes time. I'm 30 years old. I'm I'm, ready, I'm in my prime. I'm ready to fight the best now, and I, I believe I could be champion. So, you know, I wanted that fast track, and I was trying to call out, you know, I beat number 13, and I was trying to call out a guy ahead of me, and uh, I figured, you know, it made sense. I, I came to Brazil, and I took their guy out, so why don't you bring Brazil to me and see what happens, you know? But, uh, you know, it's no big deal. Either way, a fight to fight. My manager made a good point. He said, you know, either way right now, you're going to make the same money as if you fought the best guy. So let's fight this contract out, and let's, you know, uh, Let's build a lot of star power and then renegotiate and then go from there and fight the best guys then, you know? Yeah, and I mean, you, you're you someone that has been very active throughout your career, and then t- 2016 hits, and you fought for, for Ring of Combat and then had uh, some fights that, that fell apart. Have you, Has this just been a very frustrating time prior to getting that UFC call uh, where you had been inactive for over a year? Oh, yeah, I mean... You know, nothing, nothing uh, that's worth having in life is easy, you know. So uh, I just stayed persistent. I kept my faith up. I believe in myself. You know, I knew that it was going to happen eventually. You know, my managers were giving me, you know, good feedback. You know, they were in talks with Sean Shelby. But it's, in this sport, it's a, it's a matter of timing sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes you, your manager has a guy on a fight card and someone happens to get hurt in your weight class and they jump on it and you get that opportunity just because of that, you know. And um, some guys get in there earlier that, that maybe don't deserve it as much as you, but, you know, you just got to wait your turn, and, and you can't, you know, fall off track. And that's what I did. I just kept my eyes on the prize. I stayed focused. Of course, there were times where I was uh, a little bitter towards the sport, you know, because I'm getting older. Like, I'm 30. I, I'm thinking, man, like, how long can I do this for? Like, what, you know, should I keep trying? Like, should I keep waiting? Like, I don't want to get a full-time job and then, you know, not be able to put my 100% into the sport. So, you know, I waited, and it was hard to do, but uh, here we are now, so it's worth the wait. Final thing here, as you look ahead to Marlon Vera, do you feel, you know, uh, I, I don't put too much stock into all of the, the rankings and the people, that, like their decision process, everyone's going to have different criteria, but you knocked Yuri Alcantara out of the top 15, but didn't get yourself into the top 15. Do you feel with a second performance like you did with Alcantara, that does get you then into that discussion amongst the top 15 and into those bigger fights you want? Yeah, you know, I think if I make a big statement in this fight, it'll propel me up to the top 15. You know, I think what it is is just, you know, that was my debut. I only have one fight in the UFC. And, you know, the rankings are very controversial. It's not like, you know, I don't even know who makes these things, but it's not easy to just take a guy that makes a debut and get the win. To, you know, to just put him in that guy's spot. You know, Yuri earned his way there. and He has, you know, 13 UFC fights. 
So sure. I guess it takes a little more time, but I plan to make a big statement on Long Island and uh, you know, make some more noise, and I think they'll, they'll take a liking to me and they'll, they'll put me in that 15. Well, we're uh, we're looking forward to to the uh, the quick turnaround for you. July twenty second, it will be Brian Kelleher taking on Marlon Vera on Long Island. And uh, Brian, personally, I feel that your story is one that uh, not just the perseverance you had, but that entire performance from the submission to how you handled the post fight with Brian Stan. That is a lesson for so many fighters out there to maximize the opportunities that are given to you in the sport, because not everybody gets all of those opportunities and capitalizes on them. You certainly did this past Saturday, and I want to thank you so much for joining us. You can follow Brian at uh, Brian Boom. 135 on Twitter and are there any sponsors out there as well Brian that have been uh, supporting you along this road to the UFC that you wanted to thank you know what uh, one sponsor I want to really thank the float place uh, it's like a float tank with Epsom salt and it's a really good for your mental clarity and also good for your muscles as well uh, they've been great to me and uh, shown great hospitality I also want to thank my, my gym Maxim BJJ my coaches uh, Joe Monahan, Nabeel Barakat and of course, my brother uh, Keller has been in my corner this whole way, you know, and uh, it's been a huge help in my career. So, uh, and thanks to you, John, for the interview. I really appreciate it. Awesome stuff. Thanks so much, Brian. And again, congratulations on the victory. Very much appreciate this time. All right, man. Boom.